Good morning, it's day six, Quartz Fest, January 26th. It's about 7.15 in the morning, and a cloud in the sky. Um, it's gonna be a good day. And looking in the other direction, we can see the moon. And uh, eight o'clock is the Pico balloon launch, another launch day. And uh, the plan is for Stu and I to uh, drive over there and uh, be able to capture that, so. That's what gauge wire is the antenna? Uh, it's 6,000 inch piano wire. 6,000 inch piano wire. 006. 006. So they're stretching out the uh, 20 meter wire after yeah, the 20 meter band. So this is a super, super light one. So that's going to be on 20 meters? Yes. At Whisper? Yes. Okay, if I could get you guys to go back. scoot back. <laughs> I'm going to string that other end of the dipole oh, that way. So that's, that's a... There's the other half of the antenna. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to get the balloon. And when I come out, we're going to tie it onto the top end of the dipole. And then after that, I'm going to launch it very shortly because we can't hold it very long. If it decides to come towards you, please scoot out of the way. It should go straight up, but in case it starts drifting this way, just give us some space, okay? Again, you can't see it. That's a full 20 meter dipole there. <laughs> Weighs a little less than uh, right around one gram, which is about a fifth of a nickel. One of them is about a third of the way across the Atlantic, heading for Africa. The second one's just north of Bermuda. They're both still flying good at 40,000 feet. Uh, one of them has a little bit better power system than the other one, so it's recording in uh, longer during the day. Uh, they were both experimental configurations, so they look totally different than this. This is our more normal configuration that we usually launch. Um, yeah, they're doing good. So do you build those? Like, do you build that? Uh, the trackers, you can build them yourself or you can buy them or there's open source ones that you can get on the internet and combine a couple components to build. So this one here is a commercial tracker. This is a little PC board. Um, the ones from yesterday and the day before were the open source ones. This is a super light. This whole flight package is seven grams. So that's about the weight of a nickel and a penny. That's the rigging and everything. Uh, McMaster car. <laughs> they are like the source of everything. And your name and call is? Oh, Brian, November 6th, Charlie Victor Oscar. Thanks, Brian. Let's give it a couple more minutes and then uh, I'll go get the balloon. When I bring the balloon out, you'll see it doesn't look like it's inflated at all. It looks like it's just got a little teeny bit of gas in it, like we didn't put enough in it. And shortly after launch, you'll see it'll start inflating because the differential pressure between the inside and the outside of the envelope will be changing as it goes up. And as it gets up higher and higher, it'll inflate. What kind of gas is the replacement? Uh, it has hydrogen. We use hydrogen because it has a little more lift and mainly because it doesn't leak out as fast. How do you know when it's, how much to put in? Uh, that's a good question. So the question is how do you know how much to put in? Well, if we put a weight on the bottom of the balloon. Let's say it's 50 gram weight we hang on the bottom of the balloon. And we need the balloon to lift the payload plus a certain amount of free lift. And that free lift gives us our ascent rate. So if we needed uh, say 20 grams of payload and free lift, and we put a 50 gram weight on the balloon, set it on a scale, and we add gas until the scale reaches 30 grams. So 50 minus 30 is 20. And that tells us how much to put in there. 
There's a mylar, it's a mylar balloon, right? Correct. Does the mylar reflect radar? Not really. No. I mean, I'm sure it does if you have a powerful enough radar, but not not like a regular radar reflector. Now, you said it was like a, it was a party balloon, but it's a balloon specifically designed for this. No. No? Like, no. you just go down to Dollar General and buy We've We've used Chinese balloons with 50 cents. These are uh, high-end party balloons for corporate stuff. Uh, they're made in Japan, so they're a little better quality than the one I'm launching today. Um, but they're still party balloons. Two minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's our timekeeper. <laughs> Getting it all connected to one end of the dipole. That payload is in the middle of the dipole. Just picked it out of the box. Yes. That's why the long dipole. What's the call sign? That's N6 CVO. That's my call sign. No CVO. Dash. Anything? Uh, if it gets moved to APRS, it'll be dash um, 16. In the channel, it's on. Good question. I'll have to go get that and write it on the board for okay. you. Okay. I, I did not write that write that down. Yeah, you got a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> we have three balloons in the air and trying to keep all the data straight. The other two are out over the Atlantic. One of them uh, came from the north. It's heading kind of north or um, southeast. So it's heading kind of from the, uh, kind of came over the northern part of Canada and it's heading down towards Africa. That's what the wind prediction said. We didn't have any tracking data last night, so we're just kind of guessing from NOAA. Um, so it's heading that way. The other one's just north of Bermuda. So, not quite a third of the way across the Atlantic yet, but... They stayed pretty close together. For balloons, usually they take drastically different courses. So that's a good launch. Most of them we launch from here head down right towards the Mexican border. Some of them go into Mexico, and then they turn east because they're still gaining altitude. When they get up in the jet stream, then they generally go to the east. 
How many <laughs> notifications you have to give to the FAA? None. Why is that? Because they have a minimum that they want to even uh, hear from, and it has to be basically four pounds. So we're a couple hundred times under their minimum limit that they even want to hear about them. Really? So yes. The conditions, how long will that pico balloon stay up? It can stay up over a year. Over a year? Yeah, Tom has one up that's like what 400 days, 500 yeah, days or just, something. Just across the year. Yeah. <laughs> There's only a couple that lasted that long. It's, it's a big accomplishment to make a circumnavigation all the way around the globe. The ones we launched on Wednesday just made the third major milestone. So the first major milestone is a clean launch and then it reporting in, start transmitting. And then. Uh, getting stable at altitude. So it has to get up to, you know, wherever your altitude is, 40,000 feet, level off, not pop. So that's, that's a major milestone. And then waking up after it freezes all night. So in the evening, it stops transmitting, it freezes all night long, and you need to wake up in the morning. So that's another major milestone. And after that, it's really if you can make it across an ocean. So, and it's a lot of data we're cramming into the Whisper system because it's only 51 bits on Whisper. <laughs> trying to cram a bunch yeah, in there in a system that's not made for it because we're just hitchhiking on that system. So does it take two transmissions to send all the data? It does to get yeah. it all. Yeah. So if it only gets the first transmission, it'll still get your grid square and your call sign. Okay. And you know it's alive and you know where it is. Okay. To get the fine detail, like your uh, um, fifth and sixth characters of your grid square or the altitude and stuff, then you need that second transfer. Is this the third launch? Yes. Well, I forgot to mention, we shut down uh, registrations at noon today um, because most people are already here. And our total for Quartz Fest this year is 683. Yes. That's 28 more than we had last year. So we're, we had 1,050 in 2019, COVID hit, and we dropped down to about 300, and our numbers are starting to go back up. So start keep talking about uh, Quartz Fest to all your friends and your clubs. Airspace Research will be flying a 3,000-gram uh, weather balloon tomorrow. We'll be launching over uh, this uh, direction. Uh, uh, we'll have it set up. We're going to be setting up around 8 a.m. Launch is expected to be at 10. Uh, we're expected to get to uh, 109,000 feet before burst. Uh, we will be flying a crossband repeater on it. Um, the uh, input is 14556 with a 1622 PL tone, and uh, output will be uh, 445525. Uh, we'll make sure that that's up. We can also put it out uh, later if somebody needs it. And uh, we'll be flying several uh, APRS beacons on it. Uh, most of them will be flying on 14434. Uh, we'll, we'll be cross-banding them over to the, uh, the national frequency or I-gating them directly uh, to get them out to the, to the I-gates. But um, uh, you're welcome to uh, listen to them directly if you'd like. We'll also have some on 445, um, 5 or excuse me, 925, the national uh, UHF. We also will be flying a um, radio song running. Um, sorry, yeah, my bad. Um, we also will be riding, flying a radio song on there, uh, flying FS4K. We will have a ground station over by the RV next to the launch site uh, with a, um, a ham uh, operator that will uh, explain uh, more about that payload. Andy has volunteered twice this week to take the uh, trash up to the. Uh, uh, LTVA. Yay! And for what I understand, he volunteered to do it again tomorrow. Yay! He's got 224 bags of trash he's dumped off so far. Uh, we'd like to start by inviting up today's successful applicants briefly. Uh, Robert, if you're here, will you please come up to get your certificate of successful completion of your exam? Nicole, if you're present, please come on up. Okay, Eric, if you're here, come on in, friend. We had six so far tests with us today. James Keel. James took his exam with us last year here at Quartzfest, became a technician. Today became a general class operator and has promised us next year, same time, same place, to be an amateur extra. Okay, and two more to go right quick. Barbara and Jeffrey. 
Uh, you might remember Jeffrey from a couple of days ago. He earned his technician license. He returned today for his general and achieved that along with his wife for her technician license. They all deserve a great round of applause. 2817. That's not right. 2817. <laughs> We've got four both things to raffle off today, and we still have another eight or nine in the trailer.